Well, welcome to our daily devotions together today. Today is Thursday in this Holy Week, and it is the day that we see the biblical narrative really focused down on Jesus' teaching and his ministry to his disciples. There's a lot of teaching that takes place on this day. We're going to look into some of it from Luke chapter 21, and so you can be turning there in the moments that we share here together. But we also recognize that this will be the day that Jesus will wash the feet of the disciples. It is the day that Jesus will share the last Passover meal with his disciples. It's also the opportunity where Judas is dismissed to sell Christ for 30 pieces of silver. It's the day where Jesus would take his disciples out and engage in a prayer that we would later call the high priestly prayer. It would be this prayer where Jesus would sweat drops of blood knowing what would take place in the early morning hours as we move through today into tomorrow. And so all of this is taking place and Jesus is uh, preparing his disciples for what will take place uh, at the crucifixion, after the resurrection, and into the future. And so we're going to look at some of that into the future today. Luke chapter 21, take a moment to pause the video, ask the Lord's blessing on our time and his word, specifically be in prayer for our missionaries again. I want to keep reminding you of the necessity for us to be praying for others, especially our missionaries. Many of them are in countries where the coronavirus is ravaging their lands as well. And so ask the Lord to bless them, protect them during this time of coronavirus. It is a challenging time to do ministry. So ask the Lord's blessing on those things and take your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 21 as we will begin our daily devotions together today. All right, we are here in Luke chapter 21. Uh, the teaching of Luke chapter 21 could be a day before, or it could be on Thursday, so either Wednesday or Thursday of this holy week. We find this instruction in Luke chapter 21, verse 25, and following to verse 33. And there will be signs in sun and moon and stars and on the earth, distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This week our focus has been on the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that is most appropriate. But it is also during this same week that Christ changes the focus of the disciples from this moment and turns it to looking into the future. The disciples had expected, most likely, arriving into Jerusalem as conquerors. We see that as most likely Judas's disillusionment and part of the reason that he would sell Christ for 30 pieces of silver is that Christ simply didn't ride in as he thought he was going to ride in to Jerusalem. When the Lord returns to this world, though, he will come with a peculiar glory and majesty. In fact, verse 27 again says this, And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. As Jesus is telling the disciples that he is going to go away, there hasn't been a full comprehension of that yet. But as the disciples are being instructed that way, Jesus also points them to the future. That there are events that are going to take place in the future by which all that they imagine will be completed and done. The heavens themselves will be shaken and shudder at the presence of the coming, at the second coming of Jesus. The redeemed of the Lord will be safe. Look into verse 28 again. The scripture there says this. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Whatever may happen today, be it the effects of a sin-stained world like coronavirus or the acts of ungodly people, the servants of Jesus wait patiently for Christ to finish all that he is at work doing. 
Our master is the king of kings and lord of lords. Therefore, we do not get all uh, disillusioned and struggle in these moments. Uh, While there is definite stresses and definite anxieties, we recognize that there is no need for us to believe that everything is out of control. There's no need for us to turn to more politicians. We turn to our Lord and we set our eyes on him. Our politicians don't know the beginning from the end, but our Lord knows all things. And so for the believer, we set our eyes here. Now, the events that Jesus is speaking of are those events that will happen after the rapture and at the conclusion of the tribulation. And so for those of us who know Jesus in this age, we know that we will be raptured and we will be in heaven by the time that these events begin to take place. But even those in the midst of this chaotic time that we call the tribulation, even those will be safe and secure in Christ. What a wonderful truth that this life does not determine all that there is. And even in the midst of uncertainty, we still have our eyes firmly fixed on our Savior. Of course, as we begin to recognize this as well, we see God's plan is still unfolding. And so there are times where there's going to be stresses and greater uncertainty than others. But we know that today we stand with our eyes fixed, not on the news, but on the promises of God. It would be very good for us today to set our eyes off of the 24-hour news outlets and onto Christ. There's a part of me that wonders that as Jesus would soon be taken captive, he would soon be arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, there's a part of me that wonders if Jesus wasn't preparing his disciples for that moment. They're hearing all kinds of things. In fact, we know that Peter would deny Christ three times uh, in that evening between Thursday late evening and Friday morning. And uh, we see where we fall into the same trap, where our eyes are focused on the here and now. And even then on the rumors and the rumors of rumors that float around. May we be those who set our eyes on Christ and on him alone. Our response is never despair. Believer, our response is never despair. For God is faithful and he has ordained today for us to serve him in it. The plan of God is still unfolding. But while we still draw breath, we have the opportunity to proclaim the excellencies of our Savior. And we have the opportunity to do so with a boldness to reach our friends and our neighbors for the sake of Christ. As we move into the rest of this weekend together, I want to encourage you for this special weekend to continue to join us. Tomorrow, instead of our daily devotions together, we're going to have later in the day, an opportunity for us to celebrate Good Friday as we look into the cross of Jesus Christ. And so that's going to be a lengthier sermon, and I want you to be here for that. We're going to post it about 4.30 or 5 o'clock tomorrow so that you're able to engage with that. It's not going to be live. It's going to be a recording so that you can take it and pass it around to those that need to hear it. This is an opportunity for you to be reaching out and to take something tangible to hand or to send to your friends and neighbors who have questions about who Christ is and what he has done for them. And so uh, take some time tomorrow to plan ahead for that. That'll be on Friday. And then on Saturday, we're going to return to our daily devotions as we prepare for Sunday. And then Sunday morning, we have our live stream at 1045. Even though we're not able to meet together as a body of believers, enjoying the fellowship of one another, uh, we are still able to fully embrace the love and the fellowship of each other through the live stream. And so while it is just a mere shadow, and we understand it as a mere shadow of fellowshipping together, it is still a wonderful opportunity for us to worship our Lord together. So take the opportunity, make sure that you join in at 1045. Keep that as a tradition and as a habit for you to continue to fellowship together all at the same time. Use this as an evangelistic opportunity. Invite others to join us in that live stream. Whether you start watch parties on Facebook Live or you just invite others to our website or to YouTube, whatever it happens to be, be encouraging others to join us on that day. And let us make that a day where we have faithfully reached out to proclaim the excellencies of our Christ, the one that we look to and the one that we can't wait until he returns again for us. Until we see you again tomorrow, may the Lord bless you and keep you.